Okay, today's going to be a brief review and a look at uh, Revelation, the book of Revelation, what the book of Revelation is, and a simple analogy of, of the book of Revelation. And if you see my foot, in my camera it's sort of like the left, it's mirrored, so this is my right foot going up and down. Which, which is uh, relevant to something I'm, I'm going to try and demonstrate. So it's a simple look at um, a testimony, the testimony I have of the word, faithful word of God, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the, the fullness of what the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Word of God, accomplished on, on the cross of Gethsemane, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, and on the cr finished work on the cross at uh, Golgotha, uh, um, outside the outside the city of Jerusalem, and his victory, and 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 the Book of Revelation is um, twofold, really. It's the the consequences, the judgments of rejecting God's beloved Son, who was sent to die for all the sins of the world, and it's also uh, the Lord's. Um, revealing of his uh, his faithful word, his mercy, it's like a complete opening and closing of his whole plan, his whole purpose, all revealed in one go. But it's what's um, been achieved by his righteousness, by his promise, by his word, by his trueness, by his way, by his by God's son, by God. The Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, through His Son and beloved Word, who is given a revelation to His beloved Apostle, uh, one of His beloved sons, John, and and He reveals all of His revelation of what's going to happen in a period at the end, and that ends the final. It's revealing the final chapter, the closing of the book. But it's a, an eternal book, it, the, the Lord is eternal. So it's his a revelation of his eternalness, his eternity, his completeness, his victory. And he's, shared, he's taken this apostle, this was um, written 96 years after the, after the crucifixion. So this apostle was really old and frail. And the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven revealed this revelation through this man's life. He was on a, he was um, exiled on an island for for like a life sentence till he he died hard labour until he died. And on that that island he had this he he had a privilege of being able to write, and he recorded that revelation through that life experience on that island. And the Lord revealed to him what would happen. Everything that happened from the beginning, his f fulfilling of prophecy, because the Lord Jesus Christ is the prophecy, his eternal prophecy revealed and completed. It's an open and shut case. It's his judgment upon those who reject him. And it's his promise and blessing and faithfulness to those who've received him it's his mercy but it's also the judgment of God and a pro faithful promise to his seed uh, his people Israel it's the extension of his covenant that was broken through sin and uh, rebellion against God and his plan his law and Christ came to fulfill the law and establish the new and everlasting covenant of that law and that law was love by Jesus Christ and grace to it be, that love to be extended to all mankind to know freely the love of God and receive the full revelation themselves and this is the record this is the faithful record of that revelation being revealed to that beloved disciple that Jesus Christ took up into heaven and revealed it, it, the seals 
of that period because it, nobody knows what is exactly going to happen the book is a sealed book what sealed means is it will only be unsealed as that point in time is met as, it, as that point in time arrives and then nobody knows when that time arrives because it's a sealed book but the Lord has given the revelation of what's going to take place within that sealed period and basically that's what the book is and it's a promise as a the Lord has promised anybody who studies this book out and it's a book, the Holy Word is a book that needs daily study because it's living water, it's a spiritual book for believers and it will refresh and it will renew and it's a continual ongoing drinking of this water and re-reading and re-learning so this is kind of hopefully to you know to help anyone to reach anyone's understanding whether they're a believer or not a believer and to provide some hopefully some edification whether that's to um, lambs or sheep both lambs and sheep and to um, encourage the blessings of studying the scriptures and uh, learning with the Lord, learning by the by studying of the Word and looking at the the complete picture and divide, learning to divide the Word and and put all the pieces correctly in in order. So first, you have to understand wh how the book's structured because you can get the pieces wrong and you could come unstuck or you can get the things met you can get your left and right mixed up you tie your shoelaces together and you trip up and that and that, and then if you hold to that you're going to be passing that on to other people so it's a simple pattern of revelation which means revelation is like you could call it unfolding or the revealing of in its unfolding in time so um now let's get a bit of paper and I'll try, try and demonstrate. Um, start. Okay. So we know we have the record in the, the, um, the Gospel of uh, John, in John, John chapter one, and it's called Saint John, the Book of Saint John chapter 1 verse 1 and it's a testimony of the eternal word and the word is Jesus Christ he's the messenger of the father he's the author of the covenant he's the word he's he was um, the messenger sent to a Abraham who gave his name as Jehovah it's the word of Jehovah sent to, sent to the promise seed to reveal the the promise of the coming prophet, the, com the, the promise of all, all the things that in all the different prophecies the Lord was referred to because the Lord has got endless names, em endless titles, he's the high priest, he's, a, he's the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, he's the only begotten son of the Father in the bosom from eternity, he's the most high, he's the Lord and God, he's the son of the living God. And his titles are endless. His glorious end is endless, and his his revelations are are eternal. So it's an eternal revelation in the book. So we have to look at the perspective of of his revelation, and his revelation is from eternity to eternity. So the word says, "In the beginning was the word." So in eternity, before creation, that's what beginning is. So um, in the beginning, and I'm going to start on the right, but I'm this is my left. But on the camera, it, it's coming, it, it, it's back to front, so it's on the right. Um, I don't know if it will come out like that in the film, but I'll, I'll just proceed. So we have in the beginning, and I'll put up just the word. So this is in the beginning, eternity. There's no beginning or end in eternity. And in the beginning was Jesus with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. 
And Jesus is the word spoken, so God spoke through his word, and all things were brought into existence that ever existed, that we know of. And everything in heaven and earth that exists is through God. There's nothing beside God. He's the author and finisher of all things. He's the creator. He's the author of eternal life. He is eternal life. And he sent his eternal son, who's the living word. And so we're looking at a, pol a polarity of eternity into time, towards his promise, which is the cross, and then on to a point after our time, which is the same time to God in eternity. So I'll put the word there. So it's eternity. Eternity came into time and returned to uh, eternity. <laughs> so eternity in, in time. The first advent of the Lord. His death, burial and resurrection and his victory over sin and death and his return back to eternity and the revelation of what will happen. So his, his, his return to eternity was here. And what he achieved here will be realised here at the end of time. And we're looking at the last period. This is the judgment period of the end of what happened there, realising its victory, making straight the way. And then what is not in the way is going to meet judgment because he's revealed it. And because he conquered all principalities, he conquered death, he conquered hell, he was innocent and he shed his... Uh, precious blood he became sin for us and he had he went down to hell not to suffer hell but to be victorious over it and to be a testament to it and then he then he came up out of hell he's the only one who could enter into hell because it's eternal he's the only t he's the eternal key in and out so he's revealed the existence of it and he's testified of overcoming it and then appearing on the earth. So he said, look, the only way is through me because if you, if you deny me, you go into eternal hell after you, de you die. So on a daily basis, his cross is claiming souls and if they're not safe, they're going to hell. And when that time in Revelation is uh, when when that point in time comes in in in, in time where we're fast approaching because it's close, you know. If you look at all the prophecies, it's all f fulfilling. It's it's complete. So the word that's already showed what to look for and it's revealed throughout time what to look for, the signs and to trace all, all, all the history and authorship of the evil as well as the good by that straight narrow course and in the final the final time of that period it's called Jacob's Trouble and all the, all, all the prophecies all the prophets were revealed this, the same revelation by the same revelator by the same eternal prophecy, by the same eternal prophet, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God. And so he revealed this period of time to every prophet, every, every saint, every person that was faithfully believing and meditating upon his word and writing his word on the tablets of their heart, fearing God and looking before, before, in the time of Israel and they were waiting for their Messiah to come they had the faithful promise they always had that promise, that revelation that, but, it, but it wasn't the full complete picture it was in parts of the same revelation so each prophet is given the, the same pattern 
but he's revealed in different parts within the pattern. This is the complete revelation, the complete pattern from beginning to end revealed. And the time is fast approaching. And today is a day of salvation. If you're not saved today, you might not you might not see any other chance, you know, today, tomorrow. And then that's gonna happen all at once to the world. And that's gonna turn judgment upon Israel. And jud and from Israel the Lord's gonna protect them and judge the world for attacking Israel. So the Lord's using two guilty parties. One, one is he's faithfully promised to be merciful and forgive them of their sins. And he has the other, but the other, the other group are in judgment. They've already rejected their saviour, Jesus Christ, and they've gone into judgment. So the whole world who've had an opportunity to receive the revelation is going to go into that time of judgment and, and they won't get a second chance. But the Lord is merciful and outstretched, always. So there'll be people in that period who will have a chance to escape the judgments because the Lord's outstretched mercifully to all nations throughout that period. But it's a period of judgment to Israel and the whole world. And, and it's going to be one quick slap like that, but it's going to be in slow motion over a seven years of events of building up to a crescendo then coming to a collapse. And that's the division of the revelation, all in slow motion, and the seals and the, the seven seals and the, and the vials of God's wrath. God's wrath, because the world's rejected his beloved son. He's been testified, he's been died for by, by many, many people that people today, including myself, aren't worthy to, to look in their face, look in their eyes with a straight face. And it, it, the, the Lord is outstretched today for every soul. Israel and uh, all the rest of the world that aren't, aren't related to that seed, that, um, that chosen line from Abraham, from Isaac and from Jacob. And all the, all the children of Israel and all the seed today that are still on the earth. Even if they're mixed and scattered, the Lord is outstretched to every single soul. He, this is the book. This is the book of the shepherd. This is the book of the good shepherd to all souls. This is the book of the bishop. This is the book of the for the believer. This is the this is the revelation for the lost. This is the revelation freely given by grace by solely by Jesus Christ. This is the lamentation of his heart realised. This is Jesus Christ knowing beforehand that people reject him. This is Jesus Christ revealing he died regardless that they would reject him. And this is Jesus Christ closing the book on the reality of those who have rejected him and will reject him. But the book's always open because he's merciful and it, his salvation is today, we're not at that time. And tomorrow we may not be at that time, but we're looking to him. And the believers are looking to him to return for us to escape that time. We've already escaped that time because his, his promise is faithful, his victory was, was received on the cross by people who repented and called upon his name and believed and received his victory and are born into heavenly places and this is the revelation of heavenly places from heaven from the beginning to the end uh, let me read uh, revelation chapter 1 verse 8 i am alpha and omega the beginning and the ending saith the lord which is and which was and which is to come the almighty uh, verse 18 Speaking through John, uh, speaking to John, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive for evermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. So it's a testament revealed. It's the Lord's complete triumph and glory 
glorifying God the Father in, as he was it as glorious glorified as he was in the beginning he's glorified him on the cr cross by his obedience and his, his selfless act of love his mercy for all people for his father's sake for his glory's sake and then is then the re revelation of when he puts all sinners down he puts all these wicked people down at the final end and he brings the world into judgment and then he's going to restore that kingdom and present it to his father glorious on that day this is the revelation to the whole world to israel of his eternal reign his eternal glory his eternal heart for mankind revealed in one little book which is sadly neglected and um, lost in this wicked uh, post-christian time and i'm going to read a, a, a scripture uh, And, and, and it might give some clarity and context to the sort of times we're living in. And it's a scripture, a, it's, it's a good scripture. Um, I'm always reminded to, to read daily. It keeps you balanced. It keeps you getting um, tossed around by uh, your emotions, your old nature. Um, this is uh, the first epistle of Paul, the apostle to Timothy to a young, a young companion of his that he, he took under his wing and raised in the Lord and, and blessed to reveal, reveal his uh, revelations to this beloved friend and, and uh, companion and he revealed it in this, these uh, letters and we're looking at these letters and he's reminding this, exhorting this young, young believer in Christ, a saved believer all the things he's remembered, all the things that have been revealed. And I'm going to read chapter 2, verse 1, 1 to 6. Because it's a complete revelation I was talking about. And it, these six verses will encompass the whole picture of mankind and God's heart and purpose. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. How many people give thanks uh, for all men? That's a hard thing to do, to thank people that are wicked and evil and kill children and murder and rape and lie and cheat and gang up and all the wicked in the world, all the injustice in the world, to be thankful. He's reminding this young believer to be thankful for all men. Not be too thankful for what they do, but be thankful for the fact that we have creator that's given all men life that's what this is saying be thankful be fearful be thankful that we've been given a, a, a life and we have wicked men and be, but they're not they're not a purpose to life and wicked's been dealt with on the cross so be thankful for in that context that we have a, a loving creator that saved all wicked men if they would believe for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty so I exhort you therefore that first of all supplications so supplications is um, pouring out your heart pouring out your what you've been asked to do your your capacity to, to love these people and then to pray for them intercede for them on to the lord on their behalf and for behalf of a peaceful nation that we live in that we reside in that we've been given that we're fortunate enough so it's saying all, all um prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and all that are in authority so we look at the world today and we see all these um this wickedness you know every Every family, every house, every person, before they were washed in the pre precious blood of the Lamb, and those who aren't saved are wicked, and they're born into a wicked house, they're born into sin. doesn't matter how good you think you are, how righteous and how uh, refined you are, you're a sinner and you're wicked, and no sin 
is going to uh, stand in the presence of God Almighty. No, no flesh is going to be glorified in the presence of Jesus Christ. Everything's going to bow and glorify Him, worship Him, and honour Him and love Him, because that's His uh, that's His heart revealed in believers. That love, that glory. It's, it's His it's His glory alone. It's His victory alone. He suffered. He loved all people. He cared for all souls. He cared for every moment of that life, of that precious life. To him, all, all his creations aren't, they're counted, they're numbered. They're not just a casual flip on the floor, a dusting, oh, I'll pick it up later. No, he, he calculated this with fear. This creation and life, he, he calculated this fearfully. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit re reasoned this through in a quantum computation to come up with the only right way to proceed, to give life, to create life, to give it a free choice and for not to get meddle in it but to intercede for it on its behalf and show that love through a demonstration of a faithful witness all throughout history, then the realisation of that promise, then the revealing of that promise in the flesh when he would come out of the grave and peer to his beloved children that were waiting for him and shocked and dazed and they, they experienced the joy and the realisation that God sent his son to die and he overcome the grave. No one had seen this before. And he'd just shown them it with Lazarus. And he'd just shown them it with sick people. But they still couldn't grasp what had happened. And then he was there one minute, then he, they saw him die. And then they, then they all lost heart. Most of them lost heart. And then he appeared and they were like, lit up alive and rejoiced and, and that's the record and God wants us to pray for all men because he wants all men to be saved for kings and all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. He's going to come back. He's either going to come back for the saved before judgment or he's going to come for the judgment or the closing of the judgment. Because once the book's shut, that's his appearing on the earth and that's it. And then he's going to open it up to the beginning of eternity, eternity and then it will continue. Your life will continue. Hell will continue. Heaven will con Heavenly places will continue. Heaven on earth will continue. And hell will continue forever. So it's where, where, where do you want to be? Do you want to go through that judgment if, you're, if you're, you want to gamble with your soul today? and roll the dice and go against um, intergalactic odds to actually know you're actually going to get through today and, and, and wake up, be here tomorrow. Nobody can say. Nobody knows when this, this period's going to start. We just, know, we just know the warning signs, the approaching signs, the birth pangs, the... The, the ripening of the fruit, the end of the seasons, the end of the season of a, a good era where we had a we had a Christian nation. We had a we've always had in in the world. The Lord has put base people in the world. So when you look at the the wickedness in in the higher families, that the honourable, noble, privileged families, like the royal family. The uh, the uh, the House of Lords and the, their families, their, their their lines and their you know their their society status and their background and their history and their heritage, 
and all the civil servants have grown up around that. Then, then all the, then you got the you know the public levels, and then the the people who've you know come from different you know uh, underprivileged backgrounds and gone into that world, and and then remained around it and raised other people that have followed in that footsteps generationally that have been in those uh, houses, in those um, echelons of power and associated in that society, in that uh, part of the human race, in, in our nation. And these people, are, the, the Lord said, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Uh, and God is merciful to all those people. Those people have an opportunity to repent and be saved. And God wants them all to be saved. And he wants his, his uh, children, his saints, the believers, to uh, so-called Christians, to um, pray for these people, intercede for these people, um, intercede for all men, be thankful for all men. Because that time of revelation is coming fast and the Lord is judging on a daily basis. He's sifting. He's sifting the wheat from the chaff. And who kn we don't know when the Lord's going to pluck up tares and uh, e even wheat. We don't, you don't just never know. We're fearfully in the, the will of God. We are, we're purchased by the precious blood of the Lamb. And uh, we can't say... We can't cast a stone except what has already been revealed about all sinners, about the plan of salvation, about God's heart and mind for all wicked nations, all wicked men, all wicked individuals. His judgment is done. His mercy is outstretched. And that is basically the book of Revelation. So if you're looking for understanding or you struggle with working out all the the uh, imagery and you you must understand the context that it was a man in uh, uh, a purer man in conscience and soberness than we'll ever be in this day and age this man was uh, walking with the Lord he was faithful he he gave his life up he experienced um, great hardship and uh, lack of privilege um, sort of spiritual things that, that we just cannot comprehend today and this is the closing of the book this is the closing of that chapter of the apostles of the miracles of the signs and wonders given to Israel the sealing of that revelation in that part with that one apostle the Lord revealed the whole the whole uh, establishment of that rock and that foundation, the chief cornerstone, the Alpha and Omega, the, the Lamb of God, the, uh, the Almighty God and Creator, the, the Word of God and the Son of God. And that, that was revealed to John in a simple method. And, you, and if you understand and follow what, what is taking place spiritually in John's heart and what the Lord's doing with John, He's taking him up into the heavenly places like he did Paul and he's revealing it and it's a witness for Israel. It's a revelation for Israel. It's the promise of the new and everlasting covenant that's sealed and they're sealed right in the middle of it, right in the heart. So he's put Israel right in the heart of the book and he's gone, and, you know, the Lord's faithful to his word and he said, well, you're, you're going to go through the refining fire and the choice, the chosen seed will will be saved, and the and the wheat, the Lord will sift the wheat from the chaff out of Israel and out of all the world, and out of uh, the Gentile nations, they'll be either hunted and killed and murdered, and some of them may be lucky enough to face the guillotine, but they will die for their faith in Jesus Christ. Or they, they might survive a period of seven years of hell, world turmoil, where the world when you read all the um, heavenly, the things that happen in the universe, the things that happen in the heavens, the things that happen on the earth, the demonic forces that come out of the bottomless pit that are unleashed in man's life, in man's, man's actions, the world is just going to let the break off and anything's going to go 
and it's just going to come up, up on the on the day and there's going to be ten powers that are going to give their power over to one man to rule the whole earth and there's going to be a deception played on the world and it'll be pulled out of the bag like a rabbit in one day the world won't see it coming because they haven't got the revelation so they, they, they don't, they're just going on business as usual thinking oh it's getting all oh, technology's getting all nice and better Oh, you know, oh, what's all that going on around with that horrible wickedness? Lucky, lucky isn't coming on my doorstep. Oh, I can't wait to get 5G and all this, all this dung, all this, you know, all this glitter and uh, trinkets and little lusts, lustful things that people put their focus on and spend their lives getting caught up in. I'm no different. It happened to me. I'm, I'm just as. Um, want my pudding before I eat my dinner as the next man and the next woman you know I've got um, all, all the passions of a man just like every man has all the passions of a man whether whether they be unleashed or not it's a, a matter of choice a matter of background a matter of belief uh, so the whole world is wicked and uh, the key to the whole book of Revelation is in um, the first chapter and it's things and it's basically in order things that were past uh, that are coming to be fulfilled things that are now and things that are, are that to come so you need to be born again to comprehend the, the eternal revelation to be able to unlock the prophecies of the Old Testament you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost to be able to comprehend all the books in in the from the beginning from Genesis through to Revelation. If you haven't got the revelation in your heart, if you haven't been saved, if you haven't been born again, you're never gonna see the revelation in Job, the revelation in the history of the Chronicles to Israel, the revelation in Genesis of the whole human creation and the whole human genome, all the seed and all the animals, all the heavens and all the orders revealed in Genesis, revealed in Exodus, revealed in Leviticus and Numbers and Joshua, revealed all throughout the Psalms and Proverbs and the, the, the wisdom of Solomon, and Ecclesiastes and the kings. We've got all the sins of the world and the kings lived out in the kings. The, the sins of Israel and the, the consequence to the how that affected the Gentile nations. We've got the sins of the Gentiles affecting the sins of the Israel because Israel has sinned, they're not blessing the world. So the world gets more evil and, and persecutes Israel and everyone loses out. So we have the restorer, the promise that the fall of the kings and the David's king, Christ the Lord, is David's faithful king and restorer. And we have a testament, the prophecy in David, in Nehemiah, in Esther, all these wonderful sisters, these wonderful women that, that um, had to step up to the plate in the hands of the Lord. And when all the men had fallen short and failed, and uh, the Lord um, raises up women, uh, you know, strong strong hearty salty Israelite women who who do the job of a king, they do the job of a man, they do the job of a fearful son or a fearful child and they, they step up to the plate in the hour and, and we have many accounts and this is what these people are, just people the Lord's picked up and used and done great things through them and led them through their lives and he's he's put that in there in Israel's DNA. He's put that that desire in the hearts of his seed. It's genetically inherited. So are all the sins. So are all the curses. It's all revealed in the Lord's book, in the Lord's word. It is written. You know, the Lord testifies in the in the middle of this book. In the, it's written of me. It's his book, he's the author and finisher of our faith, he's the author and finisher of the Holy Word, the written word, the living water. And he's revealed it to all the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, all the little prophets, um, Jonah, Joel, Noah, Habakkuk, 
Zachariah, Zephaniah, Daniel, Amos, Micah, Nahum. He's revealed it all through his love story throughout. And it's all finally through the church, through the saints, who've received the complete revelation of all those revelations revealed in this final chapter, this final book, which ends tragically because it's a it's still a it's still like that for the world you know it's still a full stop you know it's still undecided but for the for the uh, saved and redeemed it's closed and it's always open because they've received he who's got the keys to hell and death they've received eternal life so they escape hell and death through Jesus Christ to the, to the wicked, to the unbelieving. Wicked simply means those who unbelieve and reject the truth, reject the way, Jesus Christ, and they, they go to hell because God's faithful to his promise. And sadly, people don't know that. People are hard of hearing and they're lost and they need saving, they need to hear the word. Because faith comes by hearing the word and, and by hearing the word, you could, you, it turns your heart around and your mind to believe it, it has power to the lost and to the those that need refreshment, those that need restoring, those that need nour daily nourishment, those who are strong and outstanding and um, steadfast, those that, who struggle, everybody needs the daily refreshment of the living waters. And we have that faithful record preserved in the Word, and it's a neglected book. It, it's a, it, it's um, a crying shame, and it's the Lord's pain alone and burden and I want to uh, I can't do anything by myself but I just offer that, that to anybody for the Lord's sake to, for that burden to be realised for that burden to be lightened to feel after the Lord to feel after he who has died for you if, you're, if you don't know the Lord he has given you his promise, his word his revelation, his love, his mercy. The Father sent his best son, his only son, to die for you, without even questioning it. You don't even know him. He knows everything about you before you existed. He was concerned about you, more, more than your parents ever worried and had sleepless nights. He wept. He lived it in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he fixed it for you on the cross. And he's given you that freely, but that needs to be received. So if you, you're feeling after hope, you're feeling after light, you're feeling after truth, there's only one way the truth comes, and that's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I invite you to accept that invitation. And if you're a new believer, I, I like any other believer, struggled with finding my way in, in, that, in the early beginning of not knowing where to start, only having what I knew from the beginning to turn to and that was a prayer and to turn to where I first started so every time I, I went wrong I had to go back to that first step that first step of faith to receive and be restored and to be covered and come under and washed in that precious blood in that love in that mercy just to say confess I've gone wrong and I need help to get back or I need help with this study, I can't, I don't understand this and all these people are saying all these different things, I don't know which is right, which is your revelation, which is your will and the Lord's promised that there's wonderful blessings he will show you throughout and I'm sharing what I have applied that promise and just to encourage somebody to seek that understanding and to um, study the book if it's something you're afraid of approaching take it with both hands go to the Lord and just look at its structure look at what the book is look at when it was written all the things I've gone over look study those things out for yourself and it will make a big difference and learn how to put it in order and to divide the word if you don't know what that means, just ask the Lord to teach you, because you do, you, you're fully equipped with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will teach you all things that you need to know before you even realise you need them. 
you, you put your trust in the word and apply yourself you'll be blessed richly because I can testify and that's my good report that I am sharing on the wonderful holy word and the book of Revelation and the clay there in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen